Let's create a hammer that can mine a 3x3 area. Let's see. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below. With over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. All right, we found some back into other ones more. And in this tutorial, we'll be adding a custom tool type, namely a hammer that is going to be able to mine a 3x3 or in theory, because that's the way that we're going to set up, in x by x area as long as x is a number that is odd that is the only requisite here and we'll do this with a couple of things we'll make a custom hammer item and then we'll hook into one event that we need to actually hook into and we'll then see how that works first things first let's create the custom hammer item so in our item custom package we're going to right click in our java class called the hammer item and this will actually extends from the digger item over here in this case we're going to hover over this create constructor matching super where we can actually remove the tag key over here because we actually know which well should be mined here and that's going to be block tags dot mineable with pickaxe because our hammer is going to basically be a pickaxe but it's going to be a three by three pickaxe that's the whole idea and then for this we need a custom helper method which i will copy over i know that a lot of people are always a little bit antsy when i copy over stuff especially this quite long method but let's just copy it over and then you will see i'll explain and then you'll sort of understand why this is the way that it is set up so basically we're going to get a list of block positions that we want to destroy right so the idea is that this is the initial block position that we've just mined i'm going to sort of make this uh apparent by doing the following i'm going to make this like this right so let's say so let's say this is going to be a wall that we're looking at and this is the initial position that we mined. What I now want is all of the positions that are, well, basically adjacent to it, right? I want a list of all of those nine positions and then I can further refine those in a, you know, wherever. But basically that is the whole idea of this particular method. I just want the positions surrounding the initial position and I want this in a particular range, right? If I do range one, well, then I'm going to get the, all of the ones next to it. If I do range two, then I'm going to get the next, um, like, sort of roundabout of those positions. And in theory, I can do whatever range I want. Of course, at some point, you would uh, you would have too many blocks. So just keep that in mind. And all of the rest over here literally just, ju just does that, right? So the trace result is basically just, okay, what direction am I looking into, right? And am I actually, like colliding like is my is my player actually looking at a block and if this is the case then the question is what direction are we looking at because if i hit the block from the top obviously i need to go into different directions right and i would need to at that point go into x and z directions versus when i when i look at the block from the like southern direction then i need to actually go up so that is why here in this case it's the y direction that actually gets like uh, an added thing if this is confusing to you i i have a hard time explaining it any other way then this is just the way that it's set up this is more or less basic three-dimensional thinking in this case so you can also set down the cubes and you can think about it okay this is like exposition zero one two and three and you can go through that highly recommended to take a look at the code obviously this does require some amount of java knowledge this really isn't too crazy like once again in terms of the code this is not too bad say a nested for loop over here going from x and to basically having the x and the y directions and then depending on what direction it is it uses it expands in different directions whatever the case may be though that is literally all we need for the hammer item and what we're going to do is we're going to implement it and then we'll actually add the event so in our mod items class what we're just going to do is we're just going to duplicate the hole over here and this is going to be a deferred item of type hammer item this is going to be the bismuth hammer bismuth underscore hammer which is going to be a new hammer item pretty cool with a tool tier bismuth and then here what we can actually do is we can use the pickaxe item for the attributes and then the attributes here are going to be i'm going to say seven for the attack damage but it's going to have a severe attack penalty minus 3.5 because you know the hammer would be a really like difficult to wield weapon while it, it hits hard but it's going to hit only very few times because the speed is so abysmal and then the same thing goes like add it to the creative mode tab over here for the hammer and then we're also going to add a data gen that's going to be for specifically the item model very straightforward it's just also going to be a handheld item we add the translation of course nothing too crazy and then we also can add the texture over here that's going to be the bismuth underscore hammer there we go and with this all added we are now actually need to add the event and this event is going to be the block break event 
and this is going to go into a different package. So in the tutorial mod package, we're going to right-click new package called event, and inside of there, a new Java class called the mod events class. Now, we haven't really talked about events before. We will in a future tutorial. Now we're going to brush over a couple of things, but the general idea is that above the class, once again, you want an annotation at event bus subscriber. Inside, you define the mod ID, then equals tutorial mod dot mod ID, and then a comma bus equals the event bus subscriber. And this is going to be for the bus dot game. Very important bus dot game. It needs to be the game bus. And here, what we want is, well, we want a method as well as a set. Now, in this case, I will once again copy over the method that we're going to need, and I will explain. Now, all of the code is, of course, available down below, so no worries there at all. And the first thing to note, when you have any type of event method, it's always going to be public, it's going to be static, it's going to be void, and it has the add subscribe event annotation right here. Once again, if you want to use this, the code is linked down below. One thing to note is that I have done this with the help of the COFH core over here, the area of effect events. I'm pretty sure they're using a very similar type of thing, although I, uh, I'm i not sure anymore. I think I've changed this up a little bit, although I genuinely don't know because it's been a while. You can see that this is from 119 uh, where I've gotten this. And that is basically under the don't be a jerk license. So just don't be a jerk and then you're basically going to be good to go. The general idea on how this method works is as follows. We're getting, we're basically making sure, hey, when a block breaks, is the item that the player has just break and broken the block with a hammer? If this is the case, great. Then we're also going to check, was the player a server player? Because we can only do this on the server. If this is the case, then we're getting the position that was just mined, right? So this is the position that was just mined. And we're looking, if is this already contained in a set? And you might say, what? That that What is this craziness? I will explain in a second. If it is contained, we're just going to return. We're going to do nothing. If it is not contained, what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, we're going to now loop through all of the positions that the hammer item get block to be destroyed has returned. So now we're all going to get, right, with, which I've basically explained right here, we're going to get all of those different um, positions over here, right? So I've mined this position. This is the initial position, right? And now I've gotten all of the other positions and we're looping through all of those. Now, as we're looping through them, I'm going to make sure if the position is the initial position, then we're just going to continue. And then I'm also going to make sure we're going to continue if the if the block that we're about to destroy is not the correct tool for drops. Meaning that if I have a item that needs a sword to be destroyed or a, or a, or an axe, let's say, right, and I'm trying to mine that, then that would also not be destroyed. So we would just continue and skip over it. But for any block that we want to destroy, we're going to add it to the harvested blocks right here, right. So this is going to be added here. Then we're going to destroy that block and then we're going to remove it. And you might say, right, anyone who is a little bit more familiar with Java is going to say, what are you talking about? You add it to the set, you do something and then you remove it. That's kind of ridiculous. Well, wait a second. When you think about this destroy block right here, right? In theory, this is a recursive call for this specific method. Because a destroy block right here calls the break event again. Meaning that this method is called once again for the new position that we've just made. And that is why I'm asking for the initial position over here that was just destroyed. Because if I destroy once again, we're going to do it like this, right? I destroy this particular block. Next up is this block. That's totally fine. I go in here, right? This has not been added to the set, right? The set is not there. Then it's going to be like, oh, this was destroyed. Awesome. It was destroyed by a hammer. Let's freaking go. Now we're going to do this. And then all of a sudden, we're going to go into a recursive loop, which is in, at some point going to lead to the destruction of Minecraft and it's going to crash. So that's not what we want. So what we do is we say, hey, this particular block added to the set, right? We evaluate this block. All of this gets in there and they're like, oh, wait a second. No, no, harvested block. That's not right. This can't be the case. This is already in there. Return. So we're we're fine and we're continuing with the for loop. Highest level overview. That's the reason why we have this. Are there maybe better ways to do it? That is very much possible. I will not deny that that is the case. However, this is definitely going to work. So that's the that's the main thing that is definitely going to be the case. Hopefully, somewhat understandable. And there you go. You can also change the range if you so want to. You can, in theory, change the uh, range also depending on what hammer it is. You can add an enchantment, things like that. That would all work. And then changing the range like that. In this case, I've just made it the range basically changeable right here in the in the blocks to be destroyed method as a parameter. But there you go. That's the whole shebang. That's the whole idea. So now let's jump into the game and mine some stuff with our custom hammer. Well, first of all, let's let's run the data gen. But after that. Then we can jump into the game and see our hammer for the first time. So let's see. 
All right, friends, we're back in Minecraft. As you can see, the hammer has been successfully added to the game. And what happens if I mine? You can see a three by three freaking area is mined. Absolutely freaking fantastic. I love it. I mean, I don't know. This is so freaking cool. I like it. And you can see that it basically skips blocks that are not, well, usually mined with a pickaxe, right? So that is basically going to be sort of spared. And you can see it works exactly how you'd expect it to. Like, depending on the face of the block I am breaking, that is also the way that the blocks expand. Absolutely freaking fantastic. And that is a custom hammer added to Minecraft. Awesome. Like I said, all of the code is available down below, but that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, oh, that's what we're going to add. Custom armor that's also going to be trimmable. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.